So I've made this map style recently, which has proven very popular with some of my freelance clients. So I wanted to take the opportunity today to show you how I made this. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video where I talk about how to add terrain to map styles, I would recommend going and watching that first as I'll be using that technique in this video. I'll link it up top. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new composition. Now we're gonna make sure that the background color is set to white and we're gonna hit OK and then just make sure that the transparency grid isn't turned on. Now we're gonna create a map comp over here using a style called admin boundaries, which is that one there. Click on it and then you wanna click this paintbrush in to go in again and change some of the settings. Now we want to make sure that coastline is turned on. Now you can also turn on and off states and province and disputed territories. I think it looks quite nice, so I'm gonna leave them on and create. And then quickly, we just want to go into settings and we want to make sure the max zoom is turned all the way up. Hit apply and finalize. Now that we've got this, we're gonna add an effect to it called roughen edges. And then is what I would do is I turn the border down to zero. Scale, I would put at about 120 and then complexity I'd set up to about 10. Now is what this is gonna do is if I zoom into an area of the globe, you'll see that basically it's given this, uh, given sort of a hand-drawn texture to it rather than the quite digital straight lines you get just doing it straight out of GeoLayers. Now is what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another map comp. So we're gonna come up here, create new comp. We're gonna make sure that the link view, it is linked to the previous map comp we've made so that they move together. We're gonna to go next, and then we're gonna select that terrain map comp, which I talked about how to do earlier in my previous video. We'll hit create, finalize, and then to get rid of this red color, we're gonna use an effect called key light, and we're gonna select the red color with the ink dropper tool. There we go. Now we have this nice hand-drawn boundaries map with the terrain on top as well. Next. Let's go over to the part of the world which I showed in my previous version of this map style, which is China, or as Trump would call it, China. Uh, finalize again. And then I'm just going to add some text to it. I'm going to use the font Bebus, and we're going to type in China. Scale it up nice and big. Pop it there. And then I will make this three-dimensional, and I will pick whip it to the map comp anchor. So now we have this map, I want to give the map a nice paper texture, but I want the map itself to appear to be crumpled in line with the folds of the paper. So in order to do this, I'm gonna use an expansion on a technique, which I saw over on the channel Boone Loves Video. I'll link to the original video in the description if you want to find out the full details of how exactly this works. So first of all, we need to go online and find some nice free paper textures. There's some really good ones on this website called Unsplash. So we're gonna go over there now. I'll link to the one I used down in the description. There we go. I think that one's really nice. I would recommend getting as high a definition uh, texture as you can, because it's what all this will allow, is it will allow you to zoom closer into the map before the paper becomes pixelated. So we'll hit download. There we go. And then we will hop back over into After Effects. We will open that up and we will drop this in. Now that we have this paper texture, we're gonna scale this all the way down and then we will um, position it over the part of the world that we want to be doing our map on. So in this case, it's China. And then I'm gonna do Control Alt F in order to get this to fit exactly to the comps dimensions. We're now gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna move one all the way down to the bottom. This top one, we're gonna call texture. I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply. And then we're gonna play with the opacity till it looks at about right. I reckon about 25% does it. And then we will also make this three dimensional and we will parent it to the map comp anchor. I'm then gonna mark the bottom one as displacement map. And I'm going to mark this as invisible. Now, when we use the displacement map effect, which we're going on to use in a moment, it uses this layer here to determine the amount of the displacement. But it doesn't do it based upon the position or motion of this layer. It just assumes that it's locked to the composition like this. 
But it's what I'm about to do is I'm about to start animating within the Geo Layers panel. So how do I do this in a way that it takes that motion and applies it to the displacement map in a way that the effect can recognize? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So first of all, we're gonna pre-compose this bottom displacement map layer. Pre-compose displacement map. We then need to go in and we need to make sure that the dimensions of this composition are exactly the same dimensions as the main composition. So you see, see here, it's just 1920 by 1080. So let's go and change that now. Composition settings, 1920 by 1080. And then we're just gonna do Control Alt F in order to scale this down. Control Alt F, there we go. Now, we're gonna create a null object, so new, null, make sure it's center, which it is. Is then is what we're gonna do, is we're going to twirl down to the transform properties. Oh, make sure it's 3D as well. So there are new additional properties. Now we're gonna undock this layer. So we'll bring that over here. Ooh, there we go. And then we're gonna select the map comp anchor within the main composition. Now, for some reason, you can't uh, pick whip it to parent it across for the, just the null to the null between compositions. But it's what you can do is you can individually parent each of these parameters. So we're just gonna go down and we're gonna make sure that each of these are parented to each other. Position to position, scale to scale, orientation to orientation, X rotation to X rotation, Y rotation to Y rotation, Z rotation to Z rotation, and we probably don't need to bother with the opacity. So now that's done, we can close that down. Cool, now that's done. I uh, see it's shrunk down like that. So we're just gonna get the displacement map and control alt F it to scale it up. We're gonna click into here, and then we're gonna apply an effect called a Gaussian blur to this. And we're gonna set that to about 15. There we go. And then we're also gonna apply another effect called Lumetri Color. This is basically the same thing that you do in Premiere, but it exists as an effect within After Effects. We're gonna crank the contrast all the way up to the top and then put the blacks all the way down to about minus 150. Once we've applied that Lumetri Color, we then need to make sure that this layer is 3D and pick width to that null. Okay, so we're gonna come out of that we're gonna make sure that the displacement map comp is not visible because this is giving our displacement data and then this top texture layer is giving the actual texture. When they're both turned on, you see that it's, it's far too, you see the paper far too much. You just need to make sure that that is parented to the null. We're then gonna grab an effect called displacement map. Displacement map, we're gonna put this on our bottom map comp. Now we just need to change a couple of settings within here. As the displacement map, we need to select the displacement map layer. And then for the um, what's causing the horizontal and vertical displacement, we need to make sure that this is set to luminance. We need to make sure that the center map behavior is on stretch to fit, and we need to wrap pixels around. We then need to copy this effect, and we need to make sure that it's applied to all other layers. So the terrain layer, and then that text layer with the word China as well. And we need to make sure to add this to any other layers that we want to be affected by that crumple texture. So if you have an icon above the map, you may not want to apply this effect to it, but anything like place names, I would recommend using the effect. I'm just now gonna turn the uh, texture up a little bit, just so that's a little bit more obvious. Uh, there's one last step, which I forgot to mention earlier, which is because the transparency grid is technically visible under all of this, if you render it out at the moment, this will appear very dark. So to get it to appear this same white color, you just need to quickly create a new shape layer with no stroke that is just a pure white fill and put this down at the bottom underneath everything. And there we go, that's how you make that map style. I'm selling my map animations, so if you want to talk to me about any projects, then please do just fill out the Google form down in the description. And if you have any questions at all about this technique, then please do just let me know in the comments. Thanks.